Okay, let's talk about how to create a standard access control list on a Cisco router. Now, here you'll see the network that we have laid out, and I've addressed all of my PCs. So, I've got 192 to 1.10, 11, 2.10, 3.10, 3.5 for my server over here. All right, so we have everything configured, and everything is working at the moment. Now, what I want to do is I want to create an ACL that is going to allow only this PC, 192.168.1.11, only that PC to access this server. And I want to block everything else. Well, everything else going to that server. Okay, and that's all that I want. I want to block everything or allow only this PC access to that server. Now, the number one thing I can tell you about ACLs when you're writing an ACL is imagine the flow of traffic, both the traffic that you want to block and that you want to allow. So I want to allow these PCs here to still communicate with this PC here. So that traffic is going to flow this way. I want to block this PC from flowing that way to the server. I'm going to block this PC from flowing that way to the server. And I want to allow this PC from flowing that way to the server. Now, I'm only going to do this using the standard ACL. And then we're going to talk about some of the challenges with this here in a minute. Now, in general, with the standard ACL, in general, the best rule of thumb is when you write your ACLs, for a standard one, apply it to an interface that is closest to the destination. Um, and that's still going to create an issue for us in this particular environment, but, um, and it's not always accurate, it's not always true, but in general, it's kind of a good rule of thumb. So what I want to do, I can only put them on this router here, so that, I mean, that's going to simplify that, but then I have to figure out which interface I want it on and which direction. Remember, my ACLs can be applied to any interface, G00, 0, 0, 1, or 0, 02, and in any direction, inbound or outbound, and they will only filter traffic going through that interface in that direction. So, I'm going to open this one up, and I'm going to go to my CLI, and I am going to write my ACL. Now, I can do standard ACLs as numbered or named. So, I'm going to start with a numbered ACL, and we'll do that one first. So, it's access list 1. Now, anything that's 1 through 99 is going to be standard. Anything that's 100 through 199, and then there's some ranges farther on up too, um, is going to be extended. Now, standard ACLs will filter only on source IP address. That's it. They don't care about the destination. They don't care about the port number. They're going to permit or deny traffic exclusively on the source IP address. Now, the other thing you have to remember with an access list is that... When an, a an access list, all access lists have an implied deny any at the very end. They will block everything that is not explicitly allowed. So if I were to write an access list that said deny 192.168.1.1 with a wildcard mask of 255.255.255.255, that's going to deny, eh, I did, did it to the wrong one. I want one dot done. It's okay, we're going to blow this thing away in a minute anyway. That's going to deny this PC, 192.168.1.10. But because I don't have any allows in there, there's an implicit deny any at the very end. Wrong screen. There's an implicit deny any at the very end, so it's actually going to end up denying everything. So I don't want to do that. So I want to do no, no access list 1, and that will take it out. Now let's rebuild it this time just doing an allow, and we're only going to allow our the specific address that we want. So that's going to be access list 1 permit, and then rather than doing the wildcard mask of 255.255.255.255, I can use the keyword host. So I want to permit host 192.168.1.11. And that's going to permit just that host. And that's going to be this PC right here, right? So this is going to be permitted. Remember, because of that implicit deny any, it's going to block everything else. 
And so that gives me my access list. Now, I keep clicking on the wrong one. There we go. Um, now, the other issue is that access lists don't filter traffic until they're actually applied to an interface. So if an access list is not applied to an interface, then it's just going to allow all traffic to go wherever. Uh, once we start applying, that, that's when we start filtering. So right now I have an access list. It's just not doing anything until I apply it to an interface. Now, remember I said our number one tip is watch the flow of traffic. So we want things to come from here. They'll go into G00. So this would be G00 inbound right here. Now if I apply that here, it will block traffic from this one at this interface, which means we won't be able to go to that one. That's not what I'm looking for. Remember the rule of thumb, place it as close as possible to the destination, which would be here at G02. Uh, now if my traffic is coming this way, it's inbound on G00, outbound on G02, and that's where I want to apply it. So an inbound access list will filter traffic as soon as it arrives to the interface before it routes it. An outbound one will route the traffic and then filter it just before it sends it out that interface. And if I apply it here, outbound, that means this traffic that comes from PC1 all the way through here, or PC1.10 all the way through to here, won't actually trip over that interface. So that'll work. So I'm going to go to interface G02. And my command is IP access group 1 out. And that's going to apply my access list to that interface. So if I, let's end that to go all the way back out. If I do a show run, I'm going to see Interface G02, IP access group 1 out is applied. If I scroll down here, that's going to permit host 192.168.1.11. It's not going to permit anything else. So if this works correctly from PC11, or from this PC, go to my command prompt, and we'll keep this up where we can see it. I should be able to ping 192.168.3.5. And there we go, we are replying. Stop that. Okay, so we have communication from this PC through to this server. Can I get from this PC to this one? Well, we should be able to if I ping 192.168.3.5. We'll wait for the ARP failure on the first ping. And that works just fine. All right, what about from this PC? Now, this one should be able to get here, but not here. So I'm going to go to my desktop, command prompt, and I'm going to ping 192.168.2.10. And we're getting replies. But if I ping 3.5, I get a destination destination host unreachable. And notice this is a reply from, so I did hear back from somebody, but who I heard back from w was my router. And the message that it sent me was destination host unreachable, which basically means I dropped the packet, you can't get there. So that worked perfectly. I am only allowing at this point this PC through to here. Now, there are a couple of drawbacks to standard access control lists. And we use them all the time for some other functions. But there are a couple of drawbacks to standard access control lists. And that is because we're filtering only on this, P or only on this PC source IP address, I'm allowing traffic to that IP address through here, which means it can also get to 3.10. Let me get to the right PC here. and ping 192.168.3.10. Wait for the ARP failure. 
So I can get here, even if I only wanted to limit access to just this device, I can't because a standard access control list only looks at source IP address. It doesn't look at destination IP address. The other thing is it doesn't look a port number, which means if I wanted to access or limit access to just the web server here, well, I couldn't do that either because I, that requires that I filter just to port 80 and a standard access control list can't do that. Here's the other thing. Right, because I'm only allowing this traffic through here, this PC, my desktop, can ping this one, which we've already demonstrated, right, when we ping the other way. But this PC can't get to 192.168.1.10. And the reason is it sends the packet here and it comes inbound here, outbound here, hits here, this replies inbound, outbound, and it's blocked by that access list one, which is applied outbound on this interface. And so I've now broken communication between this PC and this PC. And what I was really wanting was to only allow this one to access here. I didn't necessarily want to stop these two PCs from accessing that one. Now, again, this is a limitation of standard access control lists. So why do we use them? Well, there's actually a couple of ways we'll use standard access control lists. If we want to block entire access, that it works great for that. Um, the other issue with standard, or the other way we'll use standard access control lists is we'll use them for NAT tables or sometimes to control access to VTY ports. And so in that case, we use them to identify a group of devices. Now, another thing to keep in mind with standard access control lists, and that is that they use, just like a standard access control list, they're going to use wildcard masks. So basically, you take the IP address and the subnet mask of whatever it is you're trying to allow or a block, and you just flip the subnet mask. So if the subnet mask is 255.255.255.0 for a Class C network, the wildcard mask becomes 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.255. Okay. So, um, we now, we've looked at how we can create a standard access control list, apply a standard access control list, and some of the limitations of standard access control lists. And I'm going to go ahead and stop this video here, and we're going to come back to another one. Um, and in the next video, we're going to talk about how to edit a standard access control list.